In this video, I'm going to tell you whether or not the new version of Necromunda is something that you actually want. Let me just start off uh, this video by saying this is not going to be a review of Necromunda Underhive, the new version of Necromunda from Games Workshop. This is going to be something else. So Necromunda brings back fond memories for me. It brings back fond memories for a lot of people, as it turns out. I never really played very much. I watched it played a lot because at the time I wasn't really buying, you know, war games back in the mid-90s. Um, I didn't kind of have the money for that sort of stuff, but I would go to conventions and watch a lot of games, and I was really super interested in seeing the, the way it was played three-dimensionally and the, the different terrain with the cardboard and the plastic bulkheads. I used to watch guys use uh, dental mirrors and a laser pointer to be able to see whether or not that was how they would draw a line of sight in through these buildings and stuff at conventions, like at Gen Con and stuff like that back when it was in Milwaukee. And it was super cool, and I was always very interested in it, and I read about it a lot in White Dwarf and things like that. Um, and I even bought a copy in the late 2000s at an auction that was still in the original shrink, and I got it for a crazy good price, super good, like $60. And I sat on it for months and months thinking, do I flip it? Do I, do, I, do, I, do I sell it You know, on eBay? Or do I open it? What do I do? What do I do? I eventually sold it for about $250 on eBay. So that, at this point now, with the new release, might have been the right move. I'm still not 100% sure. Anyway, all that's not super important. The fact of the matter is, is that Games Workshop has released a... Well, is about to release. It's coming out very soon, like in about a week. Um... A new version of Necromunda called Necromunda Underhive. Now, earlier in the year, they released a game called Shadow War Armageddon. Now, the trick is about these two games is that they're sort of the same. When this game, Shadow War Armageddon, was released in the beginning part of the year, people who had been playing Necromunda for quite some time were like, oh, it's basically Necromunda. It did not use the gangs. One of the big ports, you know, things about uh, Necromunda was that it was gang warfare. This new book, Shadow Warmageddon, was the same type of rules, and it was three-dimensional terrain and the whole deal, but it wasn't battle between gangs, it was battle between potentially Eldar and Necron, or, you know, Space Marine Scouts, and Grey Knights, or whatever. So you could use models you either A, already had, or B, you could easily find in your local store, and you could use whatever kind of terrain you wanted. They did sell a box with some cool terrain that was pretty limited, but you could still buy the terrain separately. It's still for sale in most of these stores, and it's now being kind of repurposed as necro uh, Necromunda terrain. But it was a cool system. I kind of enjoyed it. I've played a bunch of games, and I've been really kind of digging it, and then they announced that they were going to do Necromunda, and I was kind of like, wait, what? So they announced Necromunda back in, I don't know, April or May, I think, of 2017, uh, this year, and they said, hey, we're going to be re-releasing re Necromunda. And I thought, didn't you just sort of do that with, um, you know, Shadow War Armageddon? But they said it was going to be with gangers. I'm like, well, that's kind of interesting. I thought maybe it was going to be an expansion at first for, you know, um, Shadow War Armageddon. No, not that. Okay, well, then maybe it's just going to be uh, kind of an add-on. Uh, not a, Well, not an add-on, but like a, a, just a completely overreaching, it's the same thing, only but now we've added gangs. No, it's not that either. So I was kind of confused as to what exactly it was going to be about. But because of the way that the new kind of games workshop works through WarhammerCommunity.com uh, and all that kind of stuff, we learned a lot about it sort of early on, which is nice, but I was still a bit confused. So my earliest fear was that they were turning Necromunda into a board game because the pictures they started showing as the year kind of ground on were pictures of the gangers, really super cool new models and everything, amazing looking sculpts. And I'm not ever, I'm not really even big into the gang aesthetic too much. It's very kind of punk rock, which I like punk rock, but I don't know, it just wasn't, there's just a lot of mohawks, but you know, it's still great, amazing, technically awesome models. Um, but uh, it looked a lot like a board game because it came with tiles, which the original Necromunda came with cardboard terrain that was three-dimensional that you built with plastic bulkheads to kind of clip it all together. And like I said, tiles, kind of like um, Space Hulk. And it came with um, plastic doors, which are kind of like Space Hulk. Space Hulk's doors are cardboard on little plastic stands. And it came with 
a little bit of plastic terrain, like little kind of pieces of cover that you could hide behind, but it was predominantly all the pictures shown to be something that you played on a board that had squares on it. And I thought to myself, that's, I don't like the look of that at all. Well, I can tell you, now that I've received it, uh, the box, it's very big. It's really heavy uh, because of all those tiles. There are a lot of tiles in here. Big, thick, sturdy cardboard tiles in the box. Plus also uh, 10 for, uh, gangers from House Goliath and 10 from House Escher. Again, like I said, amazing looking um, sculpts. Uh, you can put them together in different ways. There's a lot of customization, things like that. That's really kind of cool. But all that stuff that's in here, instruction booklet, tokens, dice, and all of those tiles... Those are, the, the tiles really, the tiles are basically kind of a starter game. One thing that Shadow War Armageddon and the previous incarnation, the original Necromunda, were not, was kind of beginner friendly. The original Necromunda, at the, I mean, you, you were, it was okay for beginners because they understood, yeah, I can just put together a little bit of this terrain. But really where it started to take off is when you added a lot more terrain. Whether you bought more, uh, you know, cardboard terrain and those plastic uh, bulkheads and started building some really cool big structures, or whether you just started building your own stuff. Now, again, like I said, when this first came out, this is back before laser cut MDF. This is back before 3D printed stuff. People were, when I was going to like Gen Con, people were building amazing looking three-dimensional terrain and just super cool stuff out of plastic and, and wood and card and, and all kinds of different materials. And that's really cool when you go to a show and you see that. But your average person who's starting to think about getting into wargaming is not interested in going down that road. They're interested in something that they can open up in the box and put together and then play, hopefully relatively soon. So to some degree, with this new Necromunda, that's the case. Those tiles, even though they have big giant squares on them and everything like that, my fear was, was that you were going to be moving your characters along those squares kind of like you were playing, I don't know, Candyland or, 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 or Monopoly, and say, okay, well, these guys move four squares, so I'll go one, two, three, all right, and then I'm going to show It's not like that. There are big squares, and there's a big tile, and there's walls and all that kind of stuff, but it's still played as a game of inches. Those uh, little squares might help you a little bit to kind of visualize the inches a little bit better, but it still comes with a ruler, the game does, and it is still designed to be played as a game of inches. You sit down and say, these guys can move four inches, and so you move them four inches. You don't count four blocks. You don't do anything like that. Uh, where you go in the block, you know, you might have partial cover. You might, excuse me, soft cover. You might have hard cover. A lot of the rules that are in this new Necromunda, if you've played the old Necromunda, or even if you've played Shadow War Armageddon, will be amazingly familiar. There's a lot that is the same. I thought that potentially, when they came, when they announced the new Necromunda, that the rules were going to be a complete different departure. And as it turns out, they're very much like Shadow War Armageddon, which is very much like the original old Necromunda. So that whole thing with the tiles, all those tiles are designed so that you've got some terrain to play on that is kind of like, almost like training wheels. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but if you want to have a board to play on to kind of get the hang of it, it's a little bit more friendly and inclusive to newer players, to people that are new to Necromunda, people that are new to wargaming in general. Now what's not necessarily uh, super accepting of new people in general are the models. Like I said, great looking models. I really like them, but they are not pre-colored push fit models that you can just without glue stick together like you do with the Shade Spire models, which again are great looking models, but they're designed so that you get Shade Spire for Christmas, you open it up, you can push those guys all together, clip them all together and start playing. This has got you covered that way as far as the terrain is concerned, but for the models, you're going to have to get out your clippers and some glue and some stuff like that. They're amazing looking models. They're going to be selling them separately as well, but they're still included in the box, so it's not something where you're buying all the parts piecemeal. You've got a lot of stuff included in the box all at once, and you can start playing, even though you're playing in relatively two-dimensional, they're basically telling you it's, it's a zone mortalis kind of sewer situation, which is cool. Um, and there's scenarios and all the stuff that you need. So you can start with the box and you can go, but it's still a little bit easier um, as far as getting everything together, maybe, than the original Necromunda was. I hear what you're saying, though. You're saying, but Uncle Adam, I'm old school. 
I love to play on three-dimensional terrain. I played Necromunda back in the day, and uh, I don't want to play on on a 2D board with you know all that. I, I want to play three-dimensional. I want to. Do, how do I? How am I going to do that? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to buy this book, which is called Gang War. This is the first expansion. It's coming out the same time that. Uh, Necromunda is being released, and it is a mm, 60-ish some page book, I think, that has the three-dimensional um, terrain rules in the front part. It's got a whole section about, um, you know, oh gosh, where are we at here? Sec- uh, types of terrain, obstacles and structures, crossing uh, obstacles, platforms, climbing, stepping up, slowed movement, jumping down, all the stuff that we expect. Admittedly, stuff that was in you know, uh, Shut Up Warmageddon uh, as well from the get. But, you know, this is designed, again, like I said, to be a little bit more accepting of the newer players. If you want to start going, you know, further than that, you want to start building terrain. You want to buy a bunch of that cool plastic uh, Imperialis, whatever kind of shenanigans terrain, and build your own sort of sector and, and start playing there, you're going to need one of these. This is the Gang War supplement, and you're going to need that. But it's not just, oh, here's the 3D rules. They've also added on a lot of other stuff. They've also added in all the campaign rules so that you can get almost kind of RPG-like to some degree with your gangs. And then, of course, there's also more scenarios which are designed predominantly for the campaign play. There's a bunch of scenarios that are in the main book uh, that, that you can play on the 2D map. Then there's also even more that are designed for in this they go along with the campaign stuff. So, I don't know. I, I I do kind of wish, a little bit, obviously, that this was also in the main box. The main box uh, costs, I believe, 125 American, and this book costs 30 So, you want to get them together at the same time, it's going to be $155. But if you decide as a as a newer player, well, I'm just going to get the box. I'm going to build those people and put them together, paint them and all that stuff, and then play a bunch on the 2D. And then if I really get into it, if I really want to go that direction, I'll start working on terrain and building. Then, you know, then that's what you're going to need to do. And you don't have to do it right away. But for those of us who've either A, already got a whole bunch of terrain, possibly old terrain from back in the, when we were playing Necromunda and say the, the or, you know, the mid 90s. Uh, or people who just have a lot of terrain or love to build terrain, you're going to need to kind of get both if you want to be able to play that way. So I understand why Games Workshop did it this way, because they want their new mission in life is to get, frankly, a little bit like my mission, to get new people into the hobby. They want to get new people into the hobbies so that they buy games, obviously, because they're a company. But to do that, they have to make games that are a bit more accessible. The original Necromunda was not crazy accessible. It came with terrain in the box and you kind of put it together and stuff and built the guys. They could have done that with this, but I don't know. I think that the 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 playing it this way as in you're in a sewer battle, you know, in in the two-dimensional space makes sense. It's a good primer. It's a good thing to get started so that somebody can start playing. They didn't in my mind really dumb down any rules. Um that was a big concern of mine. I was thinking they was going to become very board game-ish. And after reading through the rules and then just watching a bunch of different, um, you know, uh, bat reps, I started to find that that wasn't the case. Like, you know, reading the rules for me sometimes doesn't click until I either A, watch somebody else play a game or play the game myself. So reading the rules, I thought, hmm. And then I watched and then I was like, aha. And that's really, I think, to me, what made me really start to understand what they were doing here. And I'm glad they did it because I can't wait for the models that are going to be coming out after uh, House Goliath and House Escher because they're going to be probably, I'm assuming, just as good as these. I've been hearing they're planning on producing another... um, The rumor going around is once a quarter there's going to be another gang that's going to come out. And the rules, I'm assuming, for the gang and the cards and all that stuff are going to be you know, included in the box with the sprues. That's one big difference that this game's got over, say, Shadow War, is that there are also cards in this game. So they've, they have changed some things. They have updated things. I'm not just talking about the cards that show what your stats are for your, for your ganger. I mean kind of special abilities cards and things like that that you can sort of get and choose and then kind of deploy and use during the game. And that's kind of a newer sort of thing um, that they've put into it. Uh, like I said, there's, there's changes, certainly, but they're, in my opinion, kind of slight. If you liked the old Necromunda, 
and you get over the fact that you're going to end up buying the the main box that's going to give you all the stuff you need, plus also, you know, the Gang War book so that you can play with your three-dimensional terrain, you're going to be set. Understand that, you know, if you want to teach new people about Necromunda, because you're old school and you want to do that, having those tiles be able to pull out and play to get that kind of you know, thing kind of hammered into their brains about how the game works and pinning and, and, and all that kind of stuff, that's actually kind of helpful because it's really hard to travel with all the terrain for Necromunda if you just wanted to go, like, you know, Christmas is coming up, you want to go and play with some of your cousins and show them the game, they're more likely to be interested in a flat 2D game than if you're like, okay, you guys hang out, I'm going to go to the car and grab all my terrain, it's going to be in four tubs, I'm going to bring it all here, we're going to set it up on top of the dining room table. That's not going to necessarily go over as well. You bring some nice looking models, some painted stuff, set up these cool boards and you know, all little doors and the bulkheads and all that kind of cool stuff. And, um, you know, you might convert some people. So if you're interested, I just wanted to let everybody know because I had confusion until I actually got the box and started, you know, really kind of delving into it, what they had done with the new Necromunda. I think that it was a smart move because it allows different players of different levels to kind of get into the game at different areas, yet doesn't really cut out a lot. And uh, I don't know, I'm looking forward to getting myself, my stuff painted and then start doing some playing. <laughs> 